Hi guys, Joe Nell here again. Uh, we're going to be going over the statewide assessments page today. Um, what I want to make sure that you guys know is that on this page, even though the students may not be taking any of the statewide assessments, maybe you have young students or students who are now outside of the testing range, you're going to need to make sure that this page is still completed, even though they may not be taking the assessments. All right. And any of the modifications or accommodations that you are going to be adding in the statewide assessments page, they also need to be reflected on the service page as well. So in the sections for English language arts, as well as math and science, I'm going to go through the same steps. You're just going to adjust it for each of those tests. I will also be providing links for you guys under the under the video so you'll be able to review any of these uh, the links in uh, for CASP or for LPAC, the alternate assessment as well as the DRDP and the Spanish testing. So just look at the bottom of the video and you'll be able to access some of those links that I'll refer to later on. I'll also provide the link to the FUSD online handbook. But if you are not a member of the Fremont Unified School District, then you won't be able to access those FUSD specific pages. All right. So again, so the English language arts on SACE, it tells you specifically what grades these tests will be provided. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, what you first want to do is really open this drop down menu and there are a few different options to choose from. You have without testing accommodations, with testing accommodations, to participate in an alternate performance assessment, which right now we are calling the CAA, California Alternate Assessment, and not to participate. So depending on your student, you want to make sure that you're picking one of these options. So for our mock student, Sarah Brown, we're going to pick testing with accommodations and you will have this green button that pops up and the designated supports embedded, designated supports non-embedded, accommodations that are embedded, accommodations not embedded, and then accessibility supports. So once you open up this green button, a whole nother page pops up which shows you the specific accommodations that are listed under each. So for now, we are going to pick text to speech. Um, I'll also pick something that is um, not already checked off. Let's just say my student does need a, a read aloud passages. Um, and going down the list, we need something in large print as well as text to speech. But please remember, when you guys are picking these accommodations, we're not just randomly picking them. These are accommodations and or modifications that the student is using on a daily basis, all right? Um, so I've picked all the ones that I believe that my student is using. And I'll also put a link uh, underneath for you guys as well that you guys can check out that gives uh, little sample videos for each of the accommodations to see if these are something that your student is actually accessing on a daily basis. So you will see that each of these um, accommodations pop up right behind each of the sections. So like right here, the read aloud, read aloud passage does not have a check next to it. So you wanna make sure that for each um, accommodation that pops up, you wanna make sure that you are also checking that section off. All right. As we scroll down, same thing happens for math. Oh, let me touch base on this accessibility supports. Um, this section is something that you're going to really want to make sure that you are connecting with your uh, administrator on your school site because there are accessibility supports as well as unlisted resources that could be a possibility for your student to use if they're not already listed, but your administrator needs to request for CDE approval. So make sure that you guys are discussing those 
with your administrator as well. Um, there are also many PD trainings that will be happening throughout the school year for SPAC testing, CA testing, LPAC. So make sure to take advantage uh, of the testing, I'm sorry, of the trainings that will be happening in regards to the testing, okay? So same thing goes for math. When we're looking at this section, same thing, you're gonna have a drop down menu and depending on what you'll need to do for your student, you're going to pick the appropriate section. So my student is going to be taking it with testing accommodations. Same thing, you'll pop open the green button, choose the appropriate accommodations for the student. Um, let's say I'm going to need her to have a calculator as part of her accommodations. Scroll down, press save, and then it'll populate next to the appropriate section. So my calculator allowed items from grades 6 to 8 and grades 11. You need to make sure that you're checking that section off as well. All right. Um, same thing goes for science. The testing grade levels are provided here. Once you get into high school, please check with your school administrators to see what year the science test is going to be offered um, for what grade level. At one point it was 11th grade. Uh, this past year it was, high, it was seniors. So just make sure that you're checking in with your administrator so that you can appropriately have your student participate in the test if they're in that grade level. So for right now, my student is in 10th grade, as you see over here, and we will not be taking the um, science test. So I have picked the not to participate outside of the testing group, and there's going to be nothing that pops up over here. Okay. So <clears throat> this next section, the alternate assessment, if the IEP team has considered and determined that the alternate assessment is appropriate for the student, make sure that you check this box if appropriate. Our student is actually taking the SBAC as part of this IEP, so I will not be checking this. But if your student is and the IEP team agrees that they're gonna be taking the alternate assessment, you would check this box. Um, in the bottom of the video, I will also provide a link to the CDE's uh, alternate assessment checkoff sheet, and you'll be able to review that, which is uh, supported for both the California alternate assessment as well as the alternate LPAC. So you can use the same form uh, for those testing. So if your student does qualify for the alternate assessment, what you're going to write in this section is that the student will not participate in the SBAC because due to the student's significant cognitive disabilities and the IEP team has determined an alternate assessment is appropriate. And the second question asks, participation in the alternate assessment is appropriate because and then you can write in something along the lines of the student requires a different format in order to access the assessment and gather accurate measures for the student's academic ability. Okay. As we scroll a little further down, we have the physical fitness test. And this is given, as you can see, for grades five, seven, and nine. You want to make sure that you're consulting with your admin, your PE teacher, and if appropriate, the adaptive physical education teacher. Uh, I will also provide the link for the CDE website uh, in regards to the physical fitness testing. Same thing though, if they need, if they're out of the testing range, you would check the appropriate box. Um, if they need, they're taking the test without accommodations, you could check that. Um, but as if you open it up, there are different accommodations. So if your student uses these and they're using this on a daily basis, then go ahead and mark the appropriate boxes. Um, at this point, our sample student, Sarah Brown, will not be uh, using any accommodations in regards to physical fitness testing at this time, okay? As we scroll down, 
<clears throat> we have another section called other statewide district-wide assessments and or alternate assessments. You would want to make sure that you're including any needed accommodations or modifications on any other district or statewide tests that were not otherwise noted already on this page. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the DRDP, the Desired Results Developmental Profile, are for preschoolers age three, four, and five years old. Um, you want to make sure that you also review the DRDP website, which I'll provide at the bottom. It's you want to make sure that <clears throat> excuse me, you're selecting the appropriate options. The TK teachers do not have to complete this section. It's only meant for students that are in preschool. All right. Our E-L-P-A-C, LPAC. This section is only needing to be filled out if you have a student who is an English learner. I'll also provide the website for the LPAC. Um, this is an, a mandated state test to determine English language proficiency. It's to be given to students whose primary language is one that's other than English. The LPAC is compromised I'm sorry, comprised of two separate ELP assessments. There's an initial assessment that's given any time the student joins the school district. It could be anywhere from July 1st all the way through the school year to June 30th. And a summative, which the testing window is only open from February 1st to May 31st. All right. So depending on if your student is taking the initial or the summative, you're going to indicate the appropriate test. And again, we have a green box that we're gonna select any types of accommodations or supports needing to be provided. So they're all listed out here and you're going to choose the appropriate ones that are provided. But make sure that if you're doing a summative assessment, you're picking underneath this section and initial will be at the top. So just pay attention to which ones you're checking off and they will auto-populate next to the correct section. So right now for this uh, video, our student is not uh, an EL student, so we are not gonna go ahead and complete any of these, but just know, as per the other sections above, they will auto-populate next to them and you're going to check off the appropriate sections. And as we scroll down a little bit more, like I was talking about earlier, we have the California Alternative Assessment. There is an alternative assessment for the English Language Proficiency Exam. And right now in our school district, we are using the VCALs. We will be switching that over in the next couple of years to the ALT LPAC, so Alternative LPAC. And you're going to want to make sure that you guys are connecting uh, both with your administrator as well as the Department of Federal and State Programs at the district office for current guidelines in regards to which testing you guys will be administering with your students, as well as the what is the name of the assessment that you'll be providing and who will be providing that assessment. So make sure that you're actually able to connect with your admin and the Department of Fed at State at the district office so that you have a little bit more information as to do all listening, speaking, reading, and writing need to be provided to the students at every assessment, or are there a combination of assessments that can be provided? Okay. As we scroll down, we have a standards-based test in Spanish. Same thing as the above. Um, this test is actually for students whose primary language is Spanish, and they're receiving English, or I'm sorry, they're receiving instruction in Spanish, or they've recently arrived as an English learner whose primary language is Spanish. And this is given through grades, in grades two through 11. So again, same thing, a green button will pop up and you'll pick the appropriate supports and accommodations necessary for the students. And I'll probably, um, kill this, but essentially what I'm saying is that anytime that any of these accommodations are listed on the statewide assessment page, 
you need to make sure that it's also reflected on the services under the accommodations and modification section of the IEP. Okay, so check out the bottom of the video once this is done for links to all of these areas um, that I'll provide down there. Thank you guys.